Real or fake? What type of tree you go with during the holidays and what you do with it afterwards will determine how steep of an impact you have on climate change this year. One thousand percent. That's how much larger the carbon footprint of an artificial Christmas tree is compared to that of a real tree. That's because fake trees are usually made of plastic, and eighty percent of them are shipped to the U.S. from China. And then, you know, typically what happens is I think the average U.S. household uses an artificial tree for only about six years. What happens to that tree? It goes straight into the landfill. And it can't decompose. It's plastic. It's fossil fuel based. You'd have to keep a fake tree for 10 years to offset its carbon footprint. But just because real trees have less of an environmental impact doesn't mean they're off the hook completely. If it ends up in a landfill, a real fir tree can produce 16 kilograms of carbon dioxide. And with about 26 million real trees. And 21 million fake trees sold every year in the U.S. An improperly discarded tree can produce the top two greenhouse gases responsible for global warming in the U.S.: carbon dioxide and methane. These emissions trap heat in the atmosphere and increase the Earth's temperature over time. You'd think that throwing your Christmas tree ornaments and wrapping paper into the recycling bin would save you from becoming an environmental Grinch. That would be true if everything we threw in the recycling bin actually got recycled, but it doesn't. During the holiday season of gift wrapping, gift giving, decoration, and food paloozas, the average American produces 25% more trash, and a lot of that waste is less recyclable than one may think. Either because it's straight up not recyclable, or because there's no market to sell that recycled product too. Meaning, a lot of that stuff just ends up contaminating recycling loads. So, what should you throw in the recycling bin, and what should you not? We asked recycling guru Craig Hample with the Burbank Recycling Center in California. Let's start with artificial Christmas trees. Because they are such a mixture of wood and and、uh, metal wire and plastic, those are really difficult to separate and make any sense of. So those go into the trash. And wrapping paper? If it's very simple wrapping paper. You know, just a a plain white or something like that. It's it's recyclable. If it has a lot of other things、um, mixed into the coloring scheme and and decorative schemes, probably not. Now bows. They're cute, but are they recyclable? No. A lot of sticky pads on the back, things like that. So, again, we're mixing materials. Ornaments. Don't try to recycle them. It's just it's not going to work. Unless it's something simple like string around a pine cone, throw the pine cone in the compost pile and the string in the trash. And because we're here, I might as well ask: What about artificial plastic snow? <laughs> no. <laughs> But let's end on a good note. Christmas lights, you can recycle those. For thousands of years, long before Christmas tree lots existed, people have used evergreens to celebrate the end of the year and to brighten their home during the winter. And while we associate Christmas trees with the Christian faith, the tradition of bringing trees into your home originates long before Christianity. Ancient Egyptians and Romans used boughs from pine and fir trees to decorate their homes in the winter months, and pagans used evergreens in their ceremonies for the sun god, since they represented warmer periods of the year when all plants are green, not just those trees. But the way we typically think about Christmas trees actually started a couple hundred years ago in Germany, when devout Christians would bring trees into their home to celebrate Christmas. Rumor has it that the famous Protestant reformer Martin Luther first introduced adding lit candles to the trees. Though thankfully, we have electric lights now, which are much safer. When Europeans began migrating to America, they brought this holiday tradition with them. Not so much at the beginning, when Puritans and some other colonists viewed Christmas decorations as a pagan mockery of the Christian holiday. But by the 1800s, it had become much more acceptable and mainstream. And there wasn't really a shortage of trees in the New World, so the environmental impact really wasn't a concern. In many areas, you could just go find a tree to chop down and drag it home. Today, Christmas tree farming is a huge industry. There are tree farms in all 50 states, including Hawaii. And it might sound a bit counterintuitive, but growing and harvesting Christmas trees is actually a really good thing for our economy and the environment. 
Well, so in the United States, um, there are about 15,000 tree farms across the country. Um, they employ about 100,000 Americans. You know, it, it's a pretty critical time, pandemic, recession. It's good to have a job. These, it's about a billion dollar industry a year. According to agricultural experts, Christmas tree farms have some pretty great environmental benefits. They provide a habitat for important birds, pollinators, and other wildlife. And the trees themselves are typically bred to be water wise. The farming itself is pretty environmentally sound. It's the other aspects of maintaining the tradition, like transporting the tree from the farm to your living room, that are a bit more problematic and something we should consider as we fight climate change. There are 400 million Christmas trees growing in the country right now, and we only harvest about 10% in any given year. It's 25, 35 million or so. Forest trees are a renewable resource. As long as we're responsible with our planting, harvesting, all of that, this is a renewable resource. It's really actually a great thing for family, businesses, local economies, wildlife, the environment. It's an all too familiar sight. In the weeks following Christmas, sidewalks and alleyways become these Christmas tree graveyards. After a few short weeks of decorating someone's living room, their shelf life is up. It seems pretty wasteful. At least that's what Oscar Morris thought. I received a phone call uh, from a manager at Lowe's and she asked me if I could make canes out of Christmas trees. I was running low on any kind of trees whatsoever to make canes out of. So I just lied and I said, yeah, I can make canes out of Christmas trees. Morris uses retired Christmas trees to make canes for military veterans, giving them new life and new purpose. Well, we have to let the tree um, age, sap dry. Uh, the, the sap will start to crystallize. Uh, at that point, the bees will start coming up and they actually take the sap from the tree they use that for uh, building their nest, securing their nest with leaves, and it's a pretty nice little process. So once that sap is crystallized and has come off, now we can use uh, grinders and sandpaper to take the bark off, exposing the beautiful wood that's underneath it. Um, we remove the limbs. Uh, all the pine nettles usually just fall off. We remove the limbs. The limbs are mulched. We take the mulch and we use the mulch around the property here. And unbelievably, it is the strongest wood and it's also the lightest wood, uh, two things that are necessary for a walking cane. It's, it's not a hard process, but it does take a lot of time. Thanks to Morris and the hundreds of people who donate their trees every year, these old trees are being reused and repurposed to help veterans around the country. And we are now on 815. So that would that would make 815 canes that have shipped out and received to that veteran at no cost to that veteran whatsoever. Um, the Christmas tree represents a veteran. Now Christmas trees uh, normally are 18 years old when they're taken. And so are our veterans. The Christmas tree was whipped into shape it was proudly displayed, it was decorated. But at the end of the season, of course, out to the curb, the use was over with. And we have so many veterans that feel the same way, that they just felt like after the end of their service that they were done for, there was no more purpose. Now we take the Christmas tree cane and we match it with them. And these two become buddies because they're alike. Because each one of them, when they, when, they, uh, when they figure everything that that Christmas tree has gone through is just like them, they, they get that stronger bond. They even name them. <laughs> so. With the holidays just around the corner, there are plenty of ways to decorate indoors without trashing the outdoors. Number one, get real. If you have the means, buy a real Christmas tree. If you can't afford a real one every year, keep your fake tree for at least 10 years to offset its carbon footprint. Then donate it if you can. Just avoid throwing it in the trash as long as possible. Number two, avoid the shiny stuff. I think for the holidays, try to focus, uh, try to uh, step away from the 
sort of frivolous decorations, the mylar balloons, the you know the streamers everywhere, the um, you know just the glittery, sparkly things that are one one use. You know the tablecloths that you just throw away. Try to be really creative about this. Number three, consider a living tree. Some grocery stores even sell living herb trees, which can be decorative and functional. We in the past have had actually live Christmas trees with a root ball. And after the Christmas holidays, we go out and plant the tree in the yard. And then over the years, we got to see that tree grow and remember what Christmas that was. The holidays will be here and gone before you know it. So no matter how you choose to celebrate, think beyond the next few weeks. Make sure whatever you use to decorate doesn't end up in the landfill after New Year's.